What is OTFS, Orthogonal Time Frequency Space Modulation? And is it really orthogonal in these three dimensions? Well, let's start by thinking about some modulation schemes that we are familiar with. So let's look at direct modulation. So here we've got input data, which is in a vector, the data bits that you want to send, x1 to xn. And if we do direct modulation, we send them as data in a time sequence where we send one data bit at a time. And in the frequency domain, this is a spectrum where it's got sync pulse uh, shape because of the shape of this square function here. And for more information about Fourier transforms and the shape of square pulses, check out the description below this video where you'll find a web page with plenty of videos that explain these standard modulation schemes. So this can be thought of as being, if we think about orthogonality, this can be thought of as having sending the signals orthogonal in time because each bit gets sent at its own time slot. So they are orthogonal in time. And if they go into the channel, they'll come out orthogonal in time unless the channel is uh, something that's not flat. So if the channel has a frequency response where some of the spectrum does not get propagated, then we have something called intersymbol interference. And then the output signals will smooth into each other. So the, the input will go in orthogonal, but it will come out not orthogonal. And we'll have to do something called equalization. So what can we do to try to avoid that? Well, that's what we do with OFDM. So this is another type of modulation scheme, orthogonal frequency division modulation or multiplexing sometimes referred to. So in this case, we take our input data in this vector here, and we first put it through an inverse fast Fourier transform. And that has the effect because of course it gives us something that we're gonna send in the time domain, but it has the effect then of sending our data in the frequency domain. Because if we, we have our time sequence here, if we take the Fourier transform of that, we go to the frequency domain. That would be going in this direction here. So this is essentially what we're doing now is we're putting our data into its own subchannel, and the subchannels are orthogonal. So here we had the time being orthogonal. Now we've got the frequency subcarriers being orthogonal. And this is an advantage for us because it means that if they're part of the spectrum that has a null, then the other uh, components of the spectrum, the other subchannels go through totally fine. Uh, and you can do the equalization more easily because you only have to equalize each of the subchannels independently. But you still have a problem, uh, as I say, if one of the subchannels gets totally knocked out, then this will have a high bit error rate in that subchannel. So what can we do to avoid this? Well, this is where we introduce coding. And this is what we call coded OFDM. So now we take our input data sequence, uh, we put it through forward error correction coding, uh, and then we get a sequence that's longer. Each data here will be going across multiple subchannels. If you do block coding, for example, each data bit here can affect all of the elements here, in which case it's going across all of the subchannels. So now we're going to have a situation with coded OFDM where if one of these subchannels gets knocked out by the channel when we put this signal through the channel, then we can recover it because information will be contained in other subchannels uh, and we can then use that to do the error correction. And what happens though? if you have a time varying channel. And that's where we start thinking about different types of basis functions. So OFDM, if you have a time varying channel, then that is gonna cause Doppler spread. And that means these subchannels are going to come out wider. So you put your signal in and it has these subchannels like this, but they come out spread out and they will no longer be orthogonal. And so we want to try and think about what we can do to think of a, a different modulation format with a different transform that might be able to cope with that scenario. That is the motivation for OTFS. But first it's going to help us if we look at the equation for OFDM. So here we've got the input data and we're using the N now to index, index time and the M to index the frequency subchannels. 
So it's exactly the scenario from over here. This vector here is now going to be columns of this matrix and N is going to be over time. So this is now collecting multiple OFDM symbols together into a matrix. Uh, then we can see each of those subchannels, let's just assume for the moment that there's no Doppler, so they are, they are orthogonal, then each of those subchannels at each time is going to be multiplied by a gain, the respective gain for that subchannel at that time. And that's going to give us our received value. Now let's think about this channel in a little more detail. This is going to have a lot of parameters that we're going to have to estimate if we are going to be able to recover our input from our measurements Y. Because over time, if it is time varying, then these are going to be uh, every single time slot, every, for every different value of N, there's going to be a different H vector that we need to measure across all of the frequency subchannels which are indexed by M. And this is a challenging task, measuring all of those subchannels in order to do the equalization. So can we think now, and this is where we're coming to the OTFS, about something else that we can do? Well, let's think about that channel. So here's the channel here, and we're looking at it now with frequency and time. So the frequency corresponds to M and the time corresponds to N. This is discrete up here. I'm drawing here the continuous version here. And here we're showing all of the, uh, across the frequency band, the subcarriers are in here, and some of them have a good gain, some of them have a lower gain. And as time goes on, all of those gains change uh, in, as, as time goes on across the subchannels. Now let's think about a different uh, representation of this, a transform of this. Well, if we are thinking across the subchannels, Let's pick one subchannel for an example and think about it in the time domain. If we look at the change in that subchannel over time, that is a time varying signal. If we take the Fourier transform of that, then we will get the Doppler spread. And that is something that we can then uh, transform from this uh, HNM over to a different transform where we're looking at the Doppler spread by doing a Fourier transform of in the time direction. Okay, what about in the frequency direction? So if we pick a particular time and we look at the channel in the frequency direction, if we do an inverse Fourier transform, then we will get information about the delay, the impulse response, which is the delay of the channel. So this is a way of transforming from the time and frequency to what we call the Doppler and delay, or delay and Doppler. And we index those by K and L. And this is delay and Doppler. And what we can see that even though there's a lots of changes in this channel in this domain, in the delay Doppler, we expect to see less parameters that we need to estimate. For example, there may only be a finite number of paths in the wireless channel. And so there's only a finite value of delay. And each one of those paths will have a respective Doppler value because of the relative speeds of that path. So in this domain, we might see actually that we potentially and very likely only have a very, a very sparse uh, array in delay Doppler, where we may only have a couple of values that we need to estimate. And so this is really the key to OTFS, is translating into the domain of delay and Doppler. Now these really are delay and Doppler when we think about the channel. Um, but if we were to use the same transforms, where we do a Fourier transform in one direction and an inverse Fourier transform in the other, that's a two-dimensional transform. Uh, if we do the, that two-dimensional transform on the input data, well, it's not really delay and Doppler of the input data. The input data does not have delay and Doppler. But it's common that people use the same terminology for the transform when it is acting on the input data and the received data. So it can be confusing, but that's, uh, that's what people are, are using. So I'm gonna use those in quotes when I talk about X and Y. But this is a transform, we start thinking, well, if we apply that transform, Fourier transform in one direction, inverse in the other, to this whole equation, then we're going to get a new equation in terms of delay and Doppler. So we're going to see y k comma l. And now if you do a Fourier transform of a multiplication, you get a convolution. And so 
uh, this here gives us H of K and L convolved with X of K and L. Okay, so we're thinking about a two-dimensional transform now. So when we, when we went from direct um, modulation here to OFDM, we had a one-dimensional transform of the Fourier transform. Now, when we're thinking about time-varying channels we, and OTFS, we are now doing a two-dimensional transform. Uh, and so this is, uh, in, in many ways, seen like this. I think you can see it as a natural extension. Okay, so not what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be putting the data into K and L dimensions. And so here we have the block diagram for OTFS. So we have X at K and L, and we'll call that delay and Doppler if, we, if you like. Um, and then we're going putting it into what we call an inverse symplectic fast Fourier transform. And all this is, is a Fourier transform in one direction of the matrix and an inverse Fourier transform in the other dimension of the matrix. And this gives us our input data in time and frequency. So this over here, if we go in this direction, we are doing a symplectic fast Fourier transform. So if we're going to go in the opposite direction, uh, so we put our data into here, and then we use the inverse SFFT to get our data that we are then going to put into what we call a Heisenberg transform. All this Heisenberg transform is, is a uh, filter which puts these out into the channel in a continuous time waveform. So here we've got, again, time and frequency. And so uh, one way of viewing this is like this, where essentially, because this is frequency, these are the columns of this vector are OFDM symbols in the frequency domain, and they're indexed by time. So we've got the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one. This is as n increases, and we're seeing a long sequence. This is our time domain sequence that we're putting into the channel. And so now we're seeing when we put our data in, in delay and Doppler, we are now actually spreading, just like we were with coded OFDM, we're now spreading our data across all of time and all of frequency because the inverse symplectic fast Fourier transform is taking these, this data and putting it, spreading it effectively in both time and frequency. In exactly the same way as up here with standard OFDM, uh, which was just one dimensional, where the symbol for a particular frequency affected all the time. Every single frequency one uh, value here uh, contributes to the entire time sequence that gets sent. And so uh, it's isolated in frequency, but it's spread over time. Now what we're seeing is our input data is going to be spread over time and over frequency. So this is one of the advantages of OTFS. So in what way is it actually orthogonal? Is it really orthogonal? So let's think about this uh, XKL here. And what we can see is uh, XKL, which is a vector. If we think about just making this as a vector of all zeros and only one in one of the locations, so just sending one symbol of data, then in our delay Doppler, and again, I've put quotes because they're not really delay and Doppler for X. They were delay and Doppler for the channel because that has that imparts delay and Doppler on the signal, but when you're talking about the signal itself, it doesn't have inherent uh, delay and Doppler, but we, we, we label them those because we're using the same transform. Uh, okay, so in here, if we put in our data as a matrix with only a single element in it and all the rest zero, what we can see is when we put it through this transform to get XNM, and when we put the Heisenberg, which is effectively, as I say, is like pulse shaping to get the continuous time waveform that we're actually gonna send, uh, then what we can see is we get a signal like this, and if we look at the transform of this signal, we will see uh, in continuous time, we will see a function like this in this delay and Doppler uh, basis, uh, where it's effectively, it is actually a sync function in each of the directions. So a sync function in delay and a sync function in Doppler. And this is the sense in which it is orthogonal because uh, these nulls here line up exactly with the locations of where other data would be. So if we put data in the neighboring uh, cells here of this matrix, then that would result in a sync function located at that location, and all the nulls would match up with uh, all of the nulls from over here. And there will be a null from that data where this one has a peak, and a, and a null from this data where the other one had a peak, and so on. Exactly analogous 
to these sync functions being next to each other in frequency, we now have see that in OTFS, the uh, when we it's the from the pulse shaping of our continuous waveform, we have sync functions in delay and Doppler. So this is how it's orthogonal. So we've we've got a uh, just to summarize, we've got an advantage from doing this two dimensional in that. We have an, a matrix now, which has many less elements in order for us to measure. So we don't have to measure as many elements. So it's much uh, more conceivable that we can do this uh, rather than directly in time and frequency. Uh, and the other thing is the, the signal will not be coming out orthogonal, just as it wasn't, it didn't come out from OFDM orthogonal when there was time variations. It also doesn't come out from OTFS orthogonal. However, it's a convolution, and so in the delay Doppler domain, uh, it's easier to do, conceivably easier to do the deconvolution uh, and to do the equalization in this domain. There are still many practical aspects of this to work out in terms of estimating these. How do you estimate these? Uh, what pilot sequences do you use? And how do you do that equalization? Um, but there's uh, many other things that we can talk about as well in relation to this. Um, it's not a clear cut case that OTFS is definitely better than coded OFDM because there are ways of doing coded OFDM and measuring all of these from the channel with interpolation and limited pilot symbols and a model for the channel and so on. Uh, so it's an ongoing research topic uh, of, uh, of interest where there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of excitement about OTFS, but a lot of practicality still to be worked out. So if this video has helped to understand this new modulation scheme, uh, give it a thumbs up, it helps others to find the video. Uh, check out the description below. You'll find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.